Good morning and welcome to a quick video just going over things that we're doing in class today and also getting ready for tomorrow slash Thursday depending on when you have classes. Um, the first and primary thing we're going to be doing today is reading three um, claim-based paragraphs. Um, we're first going to talk about the topic sentence, the evidence, and the reasoning. And then what we're going to be doing is reading an example of one of each of the paragraphs that you're going to be writing for your paper due on Friday, which is where you're picking an environmental indicator. And the first paragraph is really talking about the problem, why it's happening, um, why this is bad. The second is going to be talking about either indicators or services within your problem and why they're important. And then the third is going to be proposing a solution to your problem that either minimizes mitigates or solves or diverts the factors. Um, so I've picked three relevant topics and written a paragraph for each. And what we're going to be doing in class today um, is we're going to be reading it, thinking about strengths, weaknesses, and improvements. I'll link this in your email. And then thinking about one sentence that we would rewrite to make it better. Um, you can read these paragraphs here, but also if you go into the slideshow, there's some good visuals related to the rush of gold versus cacao, um, urban forested areas, and then finally solar for all reducing carbon emissions. Um, in terms of the paper due on Friday, you're going to be choosing one topic. So I gave you three examples, three different topics, but you should be using the same concept or topic for each of your three paragraphs. And I think um, when I look at um, the examples that I've given you, that this is a reasonably uh, decent paragraph in terms of size and length. Um, it's really not about the length, it's about your topic sentence, your evidence, and your reasoning. Um, but by all means, come see me over the next couple days if you have questions. Um, yeah, so that's going to be what we do mostly in class. We'll talk about some of the indicators and factors that we did for homework. The main thing for tomorrow's class, because we're going to be doing a case study, is you're going to be reading um, this article that was published um, last month about PCBs in North Country Union High School, um, and also choosing either this article from the CDC or this article from the EPA, and just listing um, specific health effects and data that supports that health effects when it comes to PCB contamination. So if I go into this article with Agency for Toxic Substances and Disease Registry, that sounds like a bunch of fun, um, they'll get into, for example, dermatological effects, reproductive effects. So for example, a study of 626 couples m married in Michigan, the risk um, conception failure um, rose in men but not in women due to consumption of PCB contaminated fish. Um, so that could be something that I could put in this article right here talking about the reproductive effect and specific data that supports that. You want to do that for about five different health effects. I'm okay with you being concise but data in terms of numbers, dates, and statistics would definitely be something to get. And then quickly just think about do you think PCBs are worth um, closing schools down? If Stowe, for example, had contaminated PCBs, would it be worthwhile to close it down and mitigate it or fix the problem? So again, in a nutshell, um, for Friday, you're reading or writing an indicator problem and solution using three claim-based paragraphs, which we're going over today. And then for tomorrow's class, you are gathering health data related to PCB contamination. I hope this video has been helpful. Reach out with additional emails if you need help.